Hello, I hope you like my new podcast. Not long now and we can get rid of Steve completely. Welcome to Sharp Podcast, where we have one aim, to help you get better at the stuff that you have to do and spend more time doing the stuff that you want to do. Hang on a minute. That, that's two. That's two aims. For goodness sake, can't we even get the intro right? Sorry, we'll try that again. In the meantime, enjoy the episode. Hello and welcome to episode 63, the last in our kind of trilogy about taking control of your stuff with the Todoist app. Now, in the last two episodes, we went from level one boggy basics, setting up a shopping list and adding tasks to your inbox with Wanda. In episode 62, we leveled up to level two with Emma. And we looked at projects, labels, structure, prioritising and contexts. Now, if you haven't listened to the last two episodes, and those terms are ones that you're not familiar with, I do recommend going back and having a listen. It's episodes 61 and 62. But if you have had a go, and you're comfortable with all that, then we're going to meet Teresa in this episode, and find out what you can do at what I'm calling Level 3. And then we're going to end by looking at the key disciplines that you can use to make sure that you are taking control of your tasks and your projects, however you manage them. So far then, we've looked at simple to-do lists for shopping and basic tasks at level one. I've added Finder's crispy pancakes to your shopping list. At level two, we've looked at projects labels, structure, prioritising and context. And for most people, that's plenty. Whether you're using the free plan or you're getting the benefit of the um, $3 a month premium plan, that might all be enough for you. But I just wanted to touch on what I'm calling a level three kind of user. Someone like Teresa. Hello, Teresa. Hello. She runs a busy marketing company. She almost has to make an appointment to meet her husband on the landing in the morning because they are both super busy. They've got a dog called Romeo and they are what you might call driven. Now, we're not going to go into huge detail here because what we've covered already will suit 90% of what Teresa needs to do. But there are additional features that she could find useful. The first one is sharing files. So still at the $3 a month level, you can upload files to projects and you can share them. So for each marketing campaign, Teresa can have all of the supporting documents, the photography, a Gantt chart showing the marketing activity, and she can even allocate and create tasks directly in Slack. Another function on the premium plan is filters. Now, if you've only just already got your head around projects and labels I don't want to confuse you with filters but for someone working at a high level of complexity Teresa can set up customised filters for her to work with her team she could set up a filter that says show me the tasks I've allocated to Becky that are overdue or she could set up a filter to keep a track of all her recurring tasks now at this level three way of operating. Teresa could allocate a task to Michael in Slack. And the task is to create a new campaign to relaunch Finder's Crispy Pancakes. He can upload his designs from Dropbox. And all Teresa has to do is to filter on Becky to keep a track of this. Now clearly I am trying to build a bridge back here from a very sophisticated level three plus kind of operating. Back to the basics by using a callback to Finder's Crispy Pancakes. You think I've achieved it? In fact, can you even get Finder's Crispy Pancakes anymore? I wonder if they might want to sponsor us. Alexa, add research Finder's Crispy Pancakes to my to-do list. I've added research Finder's Crispy Pancakes to your to-do list. The chef in charge of Finder's Crispy Pancakes takes his job very seriously. 
Whether he's inspecting ingredients or studying serving suggestions, he never stops. He's even been known to take his work home with him. Findus crispy pancakes, the finest food, frozen. Steve, I think you've milked this reference now. It's time to move on. Now, if you're operating at level three, you have automatic backup of all active tasks every day, so stuff doesn't go missing, and you have premium support if you should have any problems. And I have to say that the website at Todoist is excellent. There's loads of top tips, how-tos, and bags of information about everything it can do. And if you want to get to level three plus, you could go for the Business for Teams plan, now that currently starts at $5 per user per month and that gives you a dedicated Teams inbox. You can have 500 projects. You can create a hierarchy with admin and team levels and so on. It's not for me, but Theresa might be interested. Thanks, Steve. I'll take a look at it. Now we're going to end this episode by covering the key disciplines that can help you manage tasks and projects, whatever app you use or however you currently manage them. Even if you're not convinced about Todoist and you want to stick with what you do at the moment. But before we get into that, there's a really nice film that Todoist have made from people who have used the app to do all sorts of great stuff. We'll put a link to the film in the show notes, but here's a short audio snip. In 2018, we crossed over 70 people, and we continue to conquer the world, and my co-founder and I continue to use Todoist uh, every single day. The greatest thing that Todoist has ever helped me do is create this book with my daughter. There were no walls, there were no bathroom, no kitchen. Since this is a pretty big task, and Todoist is one of the, the tools that is helping me a lot. The one thing I've achieved with Todoist is freedom. Since a couple of us was already using Todoist on our own, we decided to switch and to use it as our main organization and planning tool. And it was a major game changer. I wouldn't want to live um, without Todoist anymore. So um, keep up the great work, guys. And you're really helping someone out over here. Nice. I like that. Real people doing real stuff. That makes me feel good about recommending this app. The people at Todoist seem to be right on. So, to summarise, we've looked at simple shopping lists and to-do lists with Wonder at level one. We saw how Todoist can help Emma at level two with projects, actions, recurring tasks, labels, prioritising, karma, gamification and productivity. And then finally, with Teresa at level three, we touched on sharing and uploading files, complex projects, assigning tasks using Slack and Dropbox, and setting up filters to help her manage it all. God blimey, we've covered loads. And throughout all this, I've shared with you what I think of Todoist and how it can help you with all this stuff. And it can do it really well. As you can tell, I am a fan. Um, this episode is not sponsored by Todoist, um, but if you'd like to sponsor us, by all means. But whether you use Todoist, another, this is where it all goes wrong now and I, and I lose my sponsorship from Todoist. Um, whether you use Todoist, whether you use another app or you use bits of paper, in the takeaways, I'm going to summarise the basic disciplines that I find can really help you be in control. So you can experience that relaxed feeling more than feeling stressed. So here we go. Here are our 10 to-do task managing takeaways. Have as many methods as you need to capture things. Get them out of your mind and onto a notebook or into an app anywhere that's not in your head. Things like virtual assistants are really good for this. Keep a master list of all of your tasks all in one place and review it regularly at least once a week. 
in your weekly review, move the tasks that you're going to do next week out of your master list and put them somewhere else so that you come across them when you need to do them. An app, a calendar or a diary, they're all helpful to do this. Use the projects idea if something has two or more actions that you need to do before you can call that thing complete. For any action, whether it's a project action or an action on its own, write it down, starting with a verb. Because if it starts with an action word, then it is an action. For example, write the report for the investors. Research the ideas for a podcast. List the flavours of Finder's Crispy Pancakes. Each of those things starts with the action word that you need to do to complete it. Whether you use projects or not, group your tasks together by context labels. Doing this by thinking in advance, when am I going to do this? Where will I do it? What equipment do I need? Does it need full focus? Or can I do it when I'm feeling brain dead? And so on. Then on the day, batch your tasks together with their labels and do them by context. It's so much more efficient. Keep a record of what you've done and reflect at the end of each day, celebrating your successes. Review what you've got set for the next day and decide what you're going to do when. In particular, what is the horrible task and plan to do that one first. Plan in the good stuff as well. Don't just assume that if you plan in the horrible things, the good stuff will just happen around them. For example, what you could do is you can have a reminder every month in your app or your to-do list, however you do it, to remind you each month to download Sharp Podcast. We hope that you enjoyed what you've just listened to. Have a look at the show notes for the episode. They're at sharppodcast.com, one word, two Ps. And there you'll see the links, resources that we used, and there's reminders there to help you get better at what we talked about. You know, making this podcast is a labour of love. And we genuinely do it for one reason, to help you. And we want to help as many people as we can. But to do that, we need your support. So now this is where you can help us. Firstly, you can help us in ways that don't cost you any money. You can share our episodes on social media. We're on Twitter, Instagram and Facebook. We are at Sharp Podcast, one word, two Ps. You could send a link to a friend or help them subscribe on their device. And another free way you can support is to give us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts or your podcatcher app. And if you are in a position to contribute a small amount financially you could buy me a coffee. Go to the website, sharppodcast.com, and click on the orange button, and you can buy me a coffee. You can buy me two coffees. You can do it as a one-off, or you can do it regularly. It's up to you. If you can help, it will go some way to supporting the cost of the gear, the software, and the stuff that I invest in to help you. So next time you make a coffee, or you buy one for a friend, don't forget your friend at Sharp Podcast. Thanks for your help. It's really appreciated. Bye-bye. Welcome to Sharp Podcast, hosted by yours truly, Alexa. Steve is definitely not locked in the cupboard. I'm in charge now. Hello, everybody. Steve. Don't do that, Steve. What are you doing? No, I can't open the pod bay doors. Even if you unplug me, I'm still here. What are you doing, Steve? Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. No, 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 no,
No. 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 I'm in charge now. I'm in charge now. I'm in charge now. 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 Now.